Hi, I'm Lorna of Lorna Stitches. I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And this is my first floss tube video. This is my first YouTube video ever. So I hope I don't appear too nervous, but I am feeling it a little bit. I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the things I do. But first, I want to tell you how I came to floss tube. I was trying to do some wool applique and I was having trouble figuring it out. So I Googled it and came across a YouTube video by Anna Bates in which she was preparing her, her wool applique and chatting about how to do it. You may know her as the Woolly Mammoth. At that time, she only had one YouTube channel and it was called Quilt Roadies. So some of you may have watched that. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Anna Bates. So using her video, I started doing some wool, wool applique. And then Anna went to a stitch along and she heard about floss tube and she talked about floss tube. And of course I had to get on that wagon and check out a floss tube. And I watched a few, mostly Anna's at first, but it reminded me how much I enjoyed cross stitching. I used to do quite a bit of it, but I haven't done it for years. And I'm not really sure why I stopped doing it, but watching all those floss tubes got me going. Anna talked about a few other floss tubers, and of course I followed them. She talked about people like the Two Martini Stitcher and uh, Jan Hicks, and oh, there are just so many, too many to even mention, but I watched so many of them. And it's been so much fun. And it's really gotten those old juices for cross stitching going again. So I want to show you some of my things. I'm going to be talking about cross stitch. Then I'm going to move on to some knitting that I've done and some quilting. Those are the three main things that I do. So let's get started and I will talk a little bit about the cross stitch. First off, I'm going to pull out a cross stitch that I did a long time ago. I believe I started it in 89, 1989. And the reason I remember that is that's the year that I transferred from Calgary to Edmonton. And I actually started this piece while I was on my house hunting trip in Edmonton. So, let me show you this. This was done on, I believe it was an 18 count Ada. And I thoroughly enjoyed working on this. There's another piece that I did that I wanted to show you. But I don't know where it is. We moved to this house about eight years ago and I'm sure when I was unpacking it I put it in one of those safe places where I wouldn't forget where it was. You know that place. When I find it I will show it to you. It's actually a cross stitch of my mom and dad. I had a pattern made many years ago of a picture of them and I turned that into a cross stitch. And it was very nice. And now that I've realized it's missing, I'm really missing it. But I'm sure I'll find it. I've recently also fully finished one other very small project. Of course, I can't do anything halfway. When I decided to get back to 
cross-stitching. I joined the Edmonton Needlework Guild and in the little welcome package that they sent me, they sent along a piece of Ada. I believe it's 18 count, just a little wee piece. So I stitched up a little Christmas drum and I turned it into a pillow. It's small, you can see comparison to my hand. It's just a little thing, but it was a lot of fun and it was kind of what got me back into cross stitching. So that was fun. So for my current project, and I don't have a lot of whips yet, and I'm trying to be at least a fairly monogamous stitcher, but we'll see how that goes because I, I tend to be a bit of a starter. But my current project that I'm working on is just a small one. I thought I'd start small. It's by, I believe it's pronounced Jardin Privé. Oh, that's backwards and I'm sorry. The title of it is in French and I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. But translated, it means the sheep stories. And I love that. I love the little house. I love the sheep. I was raised on a farm in Saskatchewan and my dad always had sheep. So I love the sheep. I love the flowers at the bottom. So this is just a small piece, but I'm really enjoying stitching it. I'll show it to you. That's how far I've gotten so far. It's been a lot of fun. I don't know if you can see my little needle minder. It's got the little sheep on it, so I thought that was fitting. And these are my threads. So I like those colors. They're all the called for colors. Didn't go too far out of the box here by switching anything up. So enjoying that one. And that's the only project that I've got on the go right now, but I do have one in the works or one in, in the plans, I guess. I've got all the, or most of the supplies for the next one I want to do. I'm only going to show you this chart very briefly. It is a free download. It's um, from Wil uh, Wil Wilchelt. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, it's their little mermaid. It was from the 2017 Australian Mirabilia Retreat. It's a mermaid. I think I said that. That's the chart. I've got a piece of 32 count star sapphire linen to do it on. And I've got most of the colors. There's one color still on back order, but my needlework shop is getting it in for me. Those are all the colors that it's going to be stitched in. So I'm quite looking forward to getting going on her. These two long ones here are watercolors, silks, variegated. I've heard they're a little bit difficult to work with, but we'll give them a try. And then we've also got beads. Ooh, trying to get, get it so it's not so glary. There's three packs of beads and there's one on back order as well. So hopefully those will all come in soon and I'll get my little sheep stories piece finished and then I can get started on this one. As far as plans, there is a chart that I'm looking for. It's not a specific chart, but I want to stitch something in memory of my sister. My sister passed this past August and I want to do something in her memory, something that 
symbolizes the things that she loved. She loved to walk. She would grab her two walking sticks and she'd be off. She did hiking trails. She walked in the mountains. It was nothing for her to, to walk 5, 10, even 12 miles a day. She was very, very fit. She also loved to travel. She enjoyed going on cruises. And so I'm looking for something, maybe a sampler, nothing too huge, that has motifs that symbolize some of those things. Something with walking. She loved nature. Something maybe with trees and birds. Maybe a ship. So if you happen to know a chart that has motifs that symbolize those things, I'd sure appreciate it if you could leave a comment and give me your suggestions because I'm looking for the right chart to stitch in her memory. So that's it for my cross stitch. I'm going to turn now to my knitting. I have recently finished two pieces. First I've got this pair of socks. These are, oh, I forgot to look up the yarn. It's the, it's a hand dyed yarn by Knit Picks, and I believe the colorway was called Alberta. I'm going to be giving these to my youngest daughter the next time I see her. She lives out of town in the country and she travels not that far about half an hour but on on country roads winter roads to get to and from work so in the winter time it's good for her to have a pair of wool socks uh, these were it's a color wash wool gosh I wish I'd have looked up exactly what it was these socks I knit after watching Jenna of Pearl Together. She's got a three part video that's called Fully Customizable Socks. I believe that's the name of it. She shows how you can use any pattern and customize it for an exact fit. It's a toe-up pattern, but the thing that I really like about her pattern is the heel flap. See this heel flap? Normally, it's on the back of a heel. She's moved it and put it at the bottom of the heel. And I love that because the heel flap is just a little bit thicker than the rest of the knitting. And this is where you normally wear out your socks first, is at the heel. So I love the idea of putting the heel flap down here. It provides a little bit of a padding, and I think it's going to make the socks wear a lot better. So check her out. She's got wonderful videos. Another project that I've finished is... Well, the pattern calls it a Knitomatic Simple Ribbed Hat. Again, it's backwards and I do apologize. Um, it's a hat. Some people call it a beanie. But here in Canada, we mostly call them toques. So this is the toque that I finished. It's just yarn out of the uh, stash, stash. It's a worsted weight by Red Heart. 100% acrylic, so nothing too fancy. But we get some pretty cold winters up here. And so this is a hat that I've made, and I think I'll probably keep it for myself, but who knows, it? if somebody really loves it, it'll go their way. So that's that. What I'm 
knitting on right now is a shawl. Again, this pattern's going to be backwards. It's called Easy Goes It by Finicky Creations. And it's a pattern that I downloaded off of Ravelry. Not much point showing it to you because there's no picture and the writing's going to be backwards. So it's a very easy shawl. I started it. Not sure exactly how to, to show this. So there we go. I love the colors. This yarn, I recently started a subscription from Spunky Eclectric. It's for a hand dyed yarn, comes once a month. And this is the first skein that I got. And I love the colors. They do a variety of yarns in their monthly mailings. This one was, I've lost the, the label for it. I think it was actually lost in a mishap that we had in the kitchen with a cup of spilled coffee. But the yarn, I remember it was a 40% Kid mohair and Murano wool and a little bit of nylon. And I'm sorry, but I don't remember the colorway, but it is so pretty. Now, it's got just the slightest odor of sheep. You can smell it just a little bit when you take it out of the package. So I was reading that you can get that smell out with vinegar. So I'm thinking when I block it, I'm going to put a little bit of vinegar in the water. And if any of you know if that's a good idea or not, please let me know. I've never done that. I don't know. But I'm really looking forward to wearing it, but I don't really want to smell like a sheep when I do. So it is so pretty. And my, that's all I've got sort of going right now, but I've gotten my second skein of yarn from Spunky Eclectric. I can show you their label. Again, it's gonna be backwards. But isn't that pretty? It is so soft and squishy, and this one has absolutely no odor at all. This one is so pretty. Oh, there, that's what I should show you is their label. Spunky Eclectic. Eclectic. And what the label says, uh, the color way is Meow Mix. It's 100% Merino wool. Solo Sock SW Merino wool. It says, this one is from my mom. During the pandemic, she's taken to watching a couple of cat channels on YouTube. Her favorite is a calico, but she truly loves all the cats. So here's my mix of all her favorite shades of kitties, all in one, and a yarn that is kitten soft. And it is, it is so soft and squishy and so pretty. So that's gonna be my next pair of socks that I do. I'm going to be caking this up real soon and casting that on. I think I'm just going to do vanilla socks because the yarn is so pretty it really doesn't need any kind of pattern or anything. I love it. So that's that's my knitting. The next time I get one of these I'll probably do a YouTube video when I'm opening it up because it's always such a nice surprise. I'm going to move on to quilting. Let me just move this stuff aside and move my quilting things in. Now 
it might be a little bit difficult to show you some of these things simply because of the size of some of them. But here's my project that I'm currently working on. I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this. I'm going to maybe I'll show it to you sort of a block at a time. That block, that's a fire truck. We've got four blocks that have street lights in it. I hope you can see that. I, I'm covering myself up so I can't see it. There's a helicopter. We've got a cement truck. A school bus. And of course, you've got to have an ice cream truck. This piece right now, well, the pattern calls for a couple of small, for a small border, but it would make a 54 inch square. I'm making it for my great grandson who just turned three. He doesn't know I'm making it, so I can't wait to give it to him. But I want it to be big enough for his bed. So I've got to find a way to lengthen it. I've got some ideas. And when I do my next video, hopefully I'll have it all finished and I'll show it to you then. The pattern comes out of the Quilt Maker magazine from September, October 2017. Oh, some glare on that if I move it over to this side. So that's the magazine where I got the pattern out of. So that one's been fun to make. This next one I'm doing is a block of the month. It's from, I believe the website is called Susie's Quilters and Crafters, and I believe the website is sitcom.com, www.sitcom.com. It's an applique quilt. Uh, she puts out one block a month. Maybe I'll stand up and try to show it that way. She puts out one block a month, and in the month that she puts it out, the block is free. And then after that, if you want, you have to pay for it. So this quilt is called Seagull Paradise. I'll show you the various bits and pieces in there. I'm hoping I'm getting it into the screen. I can't really see what I'm showing you. Isn't that fun? Across the bottom, there's a row of fish. So I've got one block to do, and then the rest of them will come out. This is, it's a year-long project, and I believe this is the first six blocks, if I remember correctly. So this is the quilt half done, and I'll show you the rest of the blocks as I make them. Okay, one more project I want to show you. Again, it's a block of the month, and it's from uh, The Quilt Show with Alex Anderson. I have truly been watching her, or truly enjoying her videos, watching them religiously. Uh, you have to join in order to get her videos, but well, there's two levels of membership. One is free. Anybody can afford that. And with a free one, you're still getting some really cool patterns and, and uh, you can follow along on the videos and it's great fun. She's got one up currently right now with uh, birdhouses that I want to do, but well, I've got 
enough projects on the go right now, but I have downloaded the pattern. So sometime in the future, but there's also a second level membership. It's not very expensive. And with that one, you get the pattern for the block of the month free. And it's a wonderful block of the month. It's, um, well, the first month was these little paper pieced houses. There's, I believe this one is house one. I'll show you the little individual blocks. And these are all going to form wedges of a circle. There's going to be a mariner's compass in the middle of it. And then taller, taller buildings, skyscrapers, Eiffel Tower, things like that around the outside edge. So it's going to be a truly wonderful quilt. So that's one set of houses. And then the other set of houses, they look very similar but they're a little bit different. This is my other set of houses. So it's gonna make for a really colorful quilt. Um, what I didn't mention earlier is that I dye a lot of my own fabrics. So these houses are all made from my hand dyed fabric. The other two quilts that I showed you, the, the quilt with the vehicles and the Seagull Paradise, they both have a lot of my hand dyed fabrics, but they both incorporate some commercially dyed ones as well. So I mix them up. But I enjoy dyeing fabrics and enjoy using them. So that's all the things that I've been working on recently. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll subscribe. That would be wonderful if you would subscribe. Since this is my first floss tube ever. Well, I just don't know how it's going to go, but I really hope that someone will watch it. Someone will subscribe. Someone will enjoy this as much as I enjoy the other YouTubes that I've been watching. I hope to do a YouTube every second week. I don't think I'll have enough stuff done to show you progress if I did it every week. So I'm thinking every second week, but we'll see how it goes. And I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your stitching. And we'll see you soon. Thanks so much for watching.